features Adam Hadley, Anna Cranning, and Arthur Bradley from Tech Against Terrorism. I'm going to take just a moment to say that how proud we are as the Government of Canada to be a strong supporter of Tech Against Terrorism and the TCAP. Last year, at the Christchurch Summit in New York, Prime Minister Trudeau announced to 1.9 million in funding to Tech Against Terrorism to expand the TCAP. And last month, in Tech Against Terrorism's amazing podcast series, Anna asked me why, and the answer was simple. We're thrilled to be a partner for Tech Against Terrorism for uh, its excellent work. That announcement that our Prime Minister made followed our initial $1 million in support to help develop uh, the first stage of TCAP. We were delighted by its success as it became the world's largest database of verified terrorist content online, shared for free with companies around the world. We consider this to be a really important contribution to our international efforts, helping bring standards to smaller platforms and have a positive real world impact on reducing the spread of terrorist and violent extremist content online. And by supporting Tech Against Terrorism and TCAP, it's a way for Canada to help meet its commitments to the Christchurch call to action, isn't it, Paul? Which, is, which explicitly calls for governments to support smaller platforms in building their capacity to moderate this content. Without further ado, please uh, join me welcoming the Tech Against Terrorism team and their demonstration of TCAP 2.0. Thank you very much, Rob, and big thanks to everyone at Public Safety Canada for organising. Uh, mega week, and of course the support that Canada has provided to Tech Against Terrorism the past few years will continue to do so. As Rob mentioned last year at the Christchurch Global Summit, Prime Minister Trudeau announced continuing support from Canada for the work of Tech Against Terrorism. And in this presentation with my colleagues Connor and Martha, we'll explain more about our work in developing practical, pragmatic technology solutions to support smaller tech platforms, and in particular, we'll talk more about the Terrorist Content Analytics Platform, or the TCAL for short. Tech Against Terrorism is an independent, some would say robustly independent, not-for-profit based in London in the UK, and we pride ourselves on representing best practice public-private partnership. In practice, what, what this means is collaborating and working with governments, private tech companies, CSOs, and commercial vendors. This is a really complex area where there are many stakeholders all working to achieve good. However, coordination is often required, and there are a number of significant gaps that Tech Against Terrorism works to address. And in particular, um, around the capacity or lack of capacity with smaller tech platforms. So our efforts at Tech Against Terrorism are primarily focused on supporting smaller platforms. But that's not to say that there aren't issues with big tech. There are big problems with big tech. And actually, so ironically, small platforms tend to be more responsive to us when we're referring content than some of the biggest platforms that exist. So it's very important as well, not just to focus on small platforms, but it's important that governments continue to regulate and apply pressure on big tech to ensure that they're upholding their terms of service and that they're being held to account correctly. But more about small platforms. So, in terms of who we are at Tech Against Terrorism, we're a public private partnership, which means that we work with a broad range of stakeholders, from big tech, of course, and smaller technology platforms. It's important to stress that when we're talking about smaller platforms, we really just mean any other platform, any platform that isn't the top five, 
because of course the concentration of traffic and revenue on the internet is heavily skewed towards the larger platforms and there's a very long, long tail. This means that smaller platforms often struggle, although they're improving their capabilities significantly, they often struggle to understand how they're being used by terrorists and violent streamers and what they can do about it. But more often than not, there's a great interest in working with us and with others to improve capacity. So there is often um, a deep interest in improving uh, their own capabilities. We also work with a number of democratic governments and uh, international organizations. And I should say, uh, we're very proud of our relationship with UNCTED, with the Counterterrorism Executive Directorate in New York, which is a body that sits underneath the Counterterrorism Committee in the UN Security Council. And um, Check Against Terrorism has come out of a process that started in April 2016 at the Security Council. We continue to work very closely with the UN in promoting the rule of law where ter removing terrorist content is concerned. We are aware of the grave risks of counter-terrorism being subverted by non- or, or, or falling democratic countries. And there are many examples that we've heard through the course of today that point to those risks. In terms of our foundations in the UN, um, we can reference three Security Council um, declarations, two of, two of which are Security Council resolutions, all pointing towards the importance of public, genuine public-private partnerships where there's independence, where there's an attempt to bridge the gap between the government and the private tech companies. As I said, we are independent and our funding is independent as well. Um, around half of our funding is from a number of governments, Canada being one of them, and uh, the other half is from GCT um, and, uh, and a number of smaller tech companies. In terms of our focus, we have three pillars of our work. Um, much like with CT, but different pillars. So our first pillar is focused on developing a forensic understanding of how terrorists are using the internet now and assessing the likelihood of it uh, changing to TPs over time. And we use this not as an academic exercise, though that is important. We, we use this to inform our own outreach. Fundamentally, the challenge with small platforms is that there are so many of them and they often bubble up out of nowhere and can also disappear. So a lot of the effort that we go to is firstly to understand which platforms are being used by terrorists now and how that work can change over time, and then how to develop a relationship with those platforms in order to support them in a way that is helpful. Everything we do for platforms is free. We consider ourselves uh, to be creating a public good for the benefit of platforms on a global basis. And to that end, um, we also support the FCT in its mentorship program. And we, we're mentoring dozens of small and actually very large platforms to improve the minimum standards or improve their standards um, uh, accordingly. The second area of focus uh, for us is uh, supporting platforms and building capacity. So we have a knowledge sharing platform which has been funded by the UK Home Office. We uh, regularly publish regulatory analysis, most recently the online uh, regulation series. And we also produce a whole series of reports and climates for mainly for tech companies, but also for governments. And on your uh, tables, there's, uh, there's, there's one flyer about the TPAP, but also in tomorrow's uh, workshop, in fact, it's the room opposite of quarter to two, we'll go into a lot more detail. We have quite a few uh, reports as well printed if you can find some. But the, the third, and I would say the most important part of what we do is building software, building technical solutions for platforms. We recognize that to help solve a, a problem on the internet, We've really got to build software, and that is really the heart of what we do. Using our open source intelligence, making the most of the relationships we build with platforms, and the knowledge that we've developed about how terrorists are using the internet, we aim to build the tools to put this into practice. It's important that there's research, it's critical that there's academic insights into the way terrorists are using the internet, but fundamentally, there's also got to be practical solutions. And in design week, we recognize. The perfect is often the enemy of the good. We've heard in a few presentations uh, so far today about the complexity of uh, terrorists and violent extremists obfuscating content. This is undeniably true. But let me be really clear there is a huge amount of obvious terrorist content on the internet. Huge, gigantic amount of content that is quite clearly associated with a designated terrorist organization. 
But I'm not going to be an insulting thing to say. It doesn't represent a, a groundbreaking shift in terrorism to the internet. But the fact remains that you've got to remain vigilant in how terrorists are using the internet. And all of this is quite boring. It's not going to make new academic papers. But it's still true. And we feel that it's important to ensure that the foundations are as strong as possible. So we don't get distracted by exciting things like our language models or GPT, as important as they are. The job is not yet done where obvious terrorist content is concerned. And in that regard, the terrorist content analytics platform that Omar and Arsene will go into a bit more detail is one of those foundations. It's free software designed to augment open source intelligence in discovering, identifying, alerting, archiving terrorist content. But it's only part of the puzzle. It's also about working with platforms to ensure that they understand regulations that are coming into place. Um, the EU is often mocked, especially by those in, in the US, in terms of its um, robust approach to regulation. But as we see in the GDPR, the EU is actually tremendously successful in creating regulation and legislation that has great positive social impact. An example of this is EU terrorist content online regulation, which applies in the EU but is also extraterritorial. We're working with the European Commission and the EU to run a capacity building program with EU platforms, uh, and that's for people tech against terrorism in Europe. Another area of focus for us is so called terrorist operated websites. And we have some reports in the other room as well. We'll go into a bit more detail about this tomorrow. Um, again, terrorist operated websites are not remotely interesting for those of us who are focused on innovation. But the inconvenient truth is that terrorists can create their own websites with impunity. There are hundreds of terrorist operated websites, collectively with tens of millions of views per month, with terabytes of material and content available. Terrorists are making a mockery of us as a community. We're quite rightly focusing on having content removed from tech platforms. But terrorists are pretty smart and they adapt rapidly. And one of these adaptations is returning to terrorist operated websites. At the moment, we're, we're working on having a number of these sites removed, but it's tremendously difficult because there are no international norms about the removal of terrorist operated websites. Terrorists can create their own website in minutes, they can pay for it. Can stay out for years, and nothing happens. More of that tomorrow. In terms of adversarial shift, then, what's abundantly clear in the terrorism of the internet is that for every action that there might be, there's an equal and opposite reaction. There's sometimes a bigger reaction from terrorist groups. Plainly, what we've seen, especially over the past three to four years, is increased fragmentation of terrorism of the internet. And in a sense, you can argue that this is, a, this, is a, 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 this is successful. This represents success with a significant amount of activity being disrupted, being pushed off big tech. There's still a lot on there. The nature of this adversarial shift is that there's now a higher concentration or, in fact, prevalence of terrorist content on a broader range of platforms. Perhaps this shows that there's some success, but it does create even greater challenges in reaching out to these platforms and engaging with them. And a key part of why we've created the terrorist content analytics platform is to help improve how content is alerted to the smaller platforms. The same as stakeholders, governments, CSOs, and others, spending an inordinate amount of time alerting the same content to smaller platforms. Because the problem with smaller platforms, and it's not their fault, is they're small, they have limited capacity, they can't handle the multiple requests, they don't have 24 7 hour coverage. Uh, and this presents a number of problems, not least uh, when there are um, online crises. And a lot of our work at Tech Against Terrorism is focused on alerting smaller platforms, both on a routine basis, but also when there's a crisis. There are a number of crisis protocols, but they're not really 24 7 and they don't really focus on smaller platforms. So with the TCAP in, in place, one of the things that we're hoping to focus on, as well as identifying threat to life, is a crisis response. So with that, um, I'm delighted to introduce Honor, who will give a demo of the TCAP.